Hello, good morning everybody. Welcome to the webinar. So great to see so many names on the list that I recognise. Even better that I can see so many names that I don't yet know. Wonderful for you to join us for this lovely automated uh, webinar that we're doing today on the topic of automatic uh, creation of, of documentation using uh, Cool Orange. Cool Orange is a a partner program, a product with us, uh, and we've been working with them for a number of years, and it's something uh, that we're really excited to bring you this morning. Um, so first of all, uh, let me say that we're using Zoom, and I know so many of you are, are very used to using Zoom uh, these days after the last couple of years, but uh, of course, as a reminder, there's a Q&A box at the bottom, so please, if you have any, any questions or comments as we go through the webinar, uh, please just use the, the Q&A box that should be at the bottom of your screen. Uh, so the reason for doing this webinar today is that one thing that we've noticed in the industry, uh, certainly over the last couple of years, and, and even maybe more so in, in, in recent months since uh, post-pandemic, uh, is that a lot of you, a lot of manufacturing companies are, are, are really, well, trying to do more with, with less. You know, a lot of people uh, have changed or, or evolved their roles in recent years. Uh, and the idea of being able to do things more efficiently as the economic situation improves makes it so much easier. Now, there's a lot of customers out there that are using, that are manually creating documents like, like PDFs, like DXFs, and are, are doing this manually. Now, that might be you know a two-minute job, but if it's a two-minute job twice, three, four times a day, an hour, you know that, that, that time really stacks up. And why are you doing it manually? Why not, you know, a lot of you are already using Vault, uh, and why not let Vault create these files for you automatically, you know, naturally, without the user having to remember to do it and to remember to save it in a certain location? And that's what Cool Orange is all about. It's a piece of middleware that really sits alongside Vault and the job processor, automatically triggering events. Uh, automatically triggering things like PDF creation and DXF creation and puts them in a certain folder. Now, I'm going to uh, stop talking now and I'm going to introduce uh, my colleagues from Cool Orange, uh, Marco and Christian, who are going to take you through the presentation about really what Cool Orange is all about and how it might be able to help you and your business. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this webinar. My name is Marco and together with me, it's Christian. Uh, today, we're going to show you how to automate PDF DXF and step uh, publishing by using Autodesk Vault Job Processor together with the Cool Orange Power Jobs. So, if you are here, then it's probably because you're running Autodesk uh, AutoCAD or Inventor, and you may or may not use Vault, but definitely you are creating PDF DXF step files or other formats manually, and that is quite time consuming and you want to increase your design team's productivity and process quality by removing repetitive and manual tasks. So how to solve this problem? Well, if you are already running Vault, Vault Workgroup or Vault Professional, then you partially have already solved the problem because with Vault, you get also the Vault to Job Processor. It's part of your Vault, it comes with standard jobs, but it can do even more. So here is a list of CAD clients. Um, maybe running with AutoCAD or Inventor, it doesn't matter, and you have a Vault license on it. All these clients are connected with the Vault server. Now, maybe you are already, or maybe you're not already using the Vault job processor, but the Vault job processor is already part of your Vault. It's typically running on a dedicated machine. It comes with some pre-configured jobs, but more importantly, it can be extended to accomplish any type of job. And here is where Power Jobs comes into play. And in order to see how this works, I'd like to hand it over to Christian. So when I finish my design in Vault, I need to publish my PDF, DXF, or STEP. And instead of opening my Inventor or AutoCAD application to perform the publishing, I just release my files in Vault. That's all I need to do. So when they are released and I open my job queue, I see that all the relevant jobs have been triggered automatically in the background with the right priority so that they are executed in the right order. So on a dedicated machine, on our job processor machine, these jobs are now executed in the background automatically by this dedicated machine. And when we look into a shared archive, uh, we see that all the files are one by one populated. 
to our network drive in this case. So here you can see the DXF files that and the step files that are created automatically. And back in Vault, uh, we see that the files that have been published are attached to our source files. And that's that's it. Back to you, Marco. Okay, Christian, that was nice. Uh, it was actually a little bit fast. So if you don't mind, I'd like to recap a little bit what we have seen so far. So where did you start? Absolutely, yeah, that was quick. So I started by taking my assembly and releasing the assembly and uh, including the sub assemblies and all the files. It's as easy as that. Let me let me make sure that I got it right. So I, I just basically kept going the same way that I'm typically working every day. There is no new button I have to learn. So basically just take my files releasing and that's it. Exactly. So for users, everything stays as before, nothing to learn in addition and no workflows that need to be changed. Okay. But I have then seen that a list of job has been populated. Where did it come from? Yeah, so with this day change of my assembly, all the relevant jobs have been queued automatically. So this is where this um, job queue is populated from. Okay, but let me ask you this. So let's say I have an assembly with about a thousand components and I'm going to release the whole assembly with all thousand components. Am I going to end up with thousands or even more jobs than job queue? No, that's that's not the case. So only jobs that uh, for these files are triggered that are really irrelevant. So in our example, we saw that uh, only sheet metal files and drawing files um, have been have been um, queued to the job queue. So the, no, there's no no such thing like thousand files um, if if your assembly is very big. Okay, well that's nice. I basically have a short and crisp uh, list of jobs. That that's nice. But then I have seen the job processor. So is this something I have to care or, or where is this running? Yeah, not at all. So jobs are executed on that dedicated machine, which gives you the possibility to continue your work in Vault while the jobs are processed on another machine, right? So you don't have to take care at all. Everything is done in the background for you. Okay, okay, that's good. that's cool. But then I also have seen that this archive on a network share has been built. For what is that for? Right, so files are published to that network share so that they can be accessed by departments outside of engineering, such as the shop floor or purchasing department, without the need to log into a vault. Okay, well, that's, that's nice. But and at the end, I also have seen that the files were also back into vault. Yeah, right, that seems redundant, but it isn't, because a lot of customers are using the vault thin client, and by having the files published back into vault, they can be accessed in the thin client. Okay, well, thank you. That was helpful. Well, I still have a list of questions. So I've seen where the files could be published to a network share and even back to Bolt to Bolt. But what if I need a different location, such as SharePoint? Yeah, that's a very common request and possible with our solution, of course. So uh, PowerJobs has a very powerful scripting engine in the background that allows you to publish files, not only to Vault or Network Drive, but also to, uh, to systems like FTP servers, online storages, or Microsoft Forge. Uh, that includes also Microsoft SharePoint or ERP or even CRM systems and many more. Okay, thank you. And what if uh, what if the file name that I need to publish has to be custom? Let's say I need the revision in the in the file name. Yeah, absolutely. PowerJobs also allows to do this, so you can specify file names um, by having the, with with the use of any given property involved. So that means you can leverage like revision letters or part numbers to compute your your custom file name. That's possible. Okay, thank you. For me, it's very important that the PDF, but even the other formats that we're going to publish are the latest and greatest version. So I need to guarantee that we're going into production with the right stuff. Can PowerJobs help me with that? Yes, yes. PowerJobs ensures that um, ensures that you're using the latest and greatest version automatically. And in addition, our solution also makes sure that you don't um, that you don't uh, modify the source files. Um, when when the neutral format such as the PDF or DXF is not created, and with with that we avoid to have non tip version errors involved. Okay, so and in some situation I may want to add a watermark. Would that be possible? Yeah, that's a good one. We also provide this functionality, um, so we can stamp um, we can stamp watermarks to PDF files as well. Absolutely. 
Okay. Most of my my drawings are multi-sheet drawings. So if I'm going to publish the PDF, I'm going to end up with a multi-sheet PDF? Yes, you do by default. Um, single sheets is possible as well as multi-sheets. Um, all that can be configured in a in an easy setting file, an INI file. Um, and you can you can choose if you want to end up with a multi or single sheet PDF files. Okay. So let's talk quickly about DXF. Now, DXF is a little bit tricky here because I need to generate a specific DXF for my machines, which has a specific configuration about banding lines and layer names and so on and so forth. Is that possible? Yes, you probably know the, uh, the settings within Inventor, and this is what we also support with PowerJobs. So all the, all the CAD applications settings can be changed in an INI file here as well. And with that, it's possible to have different settings, even for different categories and stuff like that. Okay, great. So we spoke about PDF, DXF, and step file, but what about other formats like uh, SAT or SDL, or maybe an old version of DWG to make it compatible to, to my supplier? Would that be possible? Oh yeah, all that is possible. So uh, we support all the file formats that uh, can be used by exporting with Inventor or AutoCAD. This includes PDF, DBF, uh, IGS, STAP, and, and all these formats, uh, as well as SAT and STL, DWGs in, in different versions, and, and even parasolic TX files or 3D PDFs, all that is possible. So as I said, everything that can be exported by Inventor or AutoCAD can also be automatically generated by PowerJobs. Okay, well, that's great. So we spoke about a lot about AutoCAD and Inventor, but what about other applications like, I don't know, AutoCAD Electric or MS Office? Yeah, PowerJobs can be extended to support literally any source application. That includes um, AutoCAD Electrical or MS Office applications such as Word, Excel, PowerPoint, but even third-party applications um, can, be, can be used to, to publish PDF files. Okay, great. So uh, talking about the, the archive that we have seen before. So let's say that I want to delete or remove the files or maybe archive the existing files when I, when I bring my original file back to work in progress. Would that be possible? Yes, absolutely. So this is especially interesting for files that have been published to network folders, right? So you can archive those files by either moving them to a different folder or renaming the files. Um, including the version to the file name and stuff like that. You can even simply delete the files from the network folder whenever you um, whenever you revise your file in Vault. Okay. And uh, I have seen that all the workflows so far have been triggered from the context of files. But what if I'm working with items or even with change orders? Yeah, good question. By default, our solutions uses the file lifecycle state change to trigger the publishing. Um, but it also works for items or change orders. So um, we can publish files that are attached to items whenever an item state changes, um, or we can, we can even publish files that are involved in a change process whenever the change process state changes. So that's possible as well. Okay. So we have now all these beautiful capabilities such as PDF, DXF, step files, whatever uh, publishing and so on and so forth. But typically when I create a new revision of my files of, of uh, relevant information, I need also to notify my teammates. Would that be possible as well? Yes, sending email notifications is also a very common request. And uh, all we need is an SMTP server and a port and the sender's email credential. And with that, PowerJobs is able to send emails to users or to user groups automatically whenever, whenever the file has been published. Okay, I think I'm done with my list of questions. But I get a feeling that this has been already implemented by many, many customers. And effectively, uh, as of today, thousands of users worldwide are using PowerJobs and getting benefits of all this feature. Uh, here are just three examples of the customers that are, are share their, their experience with us. So the next question is, okay, what I need to do in order to get this up and running? Well, what you need is you need a Vault work group or a Vault professional uh, in version 2020 or higher. Older ver version of Vault are also okay, but the official officially supported version is 2020 or higher, both by Autodesk and by, by Cool Orange. The other thing is that you need the Vault job processor to, to run on a dedicated workstation. The workstation could be a physical workstation or a virtual workstation, both is fine. The only important thing is that uh, it, it's capable to run um, inventor or the given application for generating the files. 
The other thing is that the job processor requires a vault license. Now, the good news is that for the classic typical jobs, um, those can be executed through DWG TrueView or the inventor server, which do not require a specific license. So typically just the job processor license required. And then in addition to that, you also need the PowerJobs processor license for the given job processor and the PowerJobs client license for the given uh, vault clients, which makes sure that all the jobs are triggered in the right sequence at the right time and even prevents user from applying changes to files while the job server or job processor is still processing the job, so preventing conflicts and so on and so forth. The last point is about service. Now, service is a tricky thing because PowerJobs comes already with a set of pre-configured jobs that works out of the box. But it might be that you may need a little bit of configuration, which typically is pretty simple and pretty easy. Or it could be that maybe your workflow is a little bit more articulated and it requires a little bit more of service engagement. Now, the good news is that the whole configuration and customization can be done through simple scripting and um, the, the product is fully documented on, on the website. And so anyone with, uh, with a little bit of scripting experience or any IT guy that has a little bit of scripting experience is actually capable to go in and adapt the jobs if needed to the given to the given requirement. Wow, what a presentation. Thank you, Marco and Christian. Awesome presentation. I hope you all agree with me that Cool Orange is a really good bit of kit. Really nice helping you achieve your goals and be more efficient in what you're doing. Now, if you're interested in any of this, please get in contact with us. Uh, we, you, know, you already know your, auto, uh, your Man and Machine account manager. Please drop them a line or an email. Or myself, I'm simon.brand at manandmachine.co.uk. Or my number is 01844 263 700. Now, this video is going to be up on our YouTube channel, along with all our other previous webinars. Uh, please visit our YouTube channel and subscribe and like uh, what you see on there. We're going to be doing more webinars like this, so please uh, look out on your emails for the next, uh, the next session. But thank you very much for your time. I hope you enjoyed the Cool Orange presentation, and please get in touch if, you're in, if and when you're interested.